what's going on guys so let's talk about the nasdaq let's talk about the stock market where could we potentially be heading how much trouble are the bulls in is this something to be concerned about is the market going lower are we going to stay here and potentially have a little bit of a dead cat bounce let's dive into the charts we're going to start off by looking at the daily time frame here now again although we did close green on the day on the nasdaq futures you know majority of the day was selling right so we had a lot of selling pressure you can see the daily candlestick here where we actually kind of went up and we tested yesterday's high wick and then we're immediately kind of rejected right so once we were kind of rejected there we never closed over that five day moving average you guys know that i follow technical analysis like like it's you know everything right because to me it doesn't matter about the news it doesn't matter about my opinion you know i'm stupid you're stupid everyone's dumb we don't know shit. the market is always right so all we have to do is kind of just react to the market i'm a pretty straight shooter when it comes to you know if i'm wrong on my potential bias or my you know whatever outlook that i have on the day you know i'm wrong right you know i'm never going to try to sit here and claim to be some type of hero that i can see what the market is doing prior or i knew that this was coming you know sometimes charts look really good to the long side and they never really get there sometimes we look great to the downside and it's a bounce you right so again we have to just kind of roll with the punches but if we realistically look at where we closed today, we closed right here. And I know you guys probably can't see it that much. And actually what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change this up a little bit. <clears throat> it's the 50 EMA, right? So I'm going to change this color purple. Do I already have purple on my screen? Maybe a lighter blue. I don't really like that either. Uh, bear with me here. Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm going to pick a color here. Maybe we go like a, like a light green. I never really used this color before. Um, all right, so let, now let's kind of see this 50 EMA and see exactly where we stand. Yeah, there we go. So notice the green line here, the little light tealish green line here. This is the 50 EMA. So this is the second day now that we've been closed under uh, the 50 day moving average. Give me a second here, people calling, people calling, people calling. Um, so this is the second day here that we've been closed under the 50 day moving average. We did not reclaim it. We did not reclaim the five day moving average. So sentiment is still pushing to the downside. The sellers are still in control. Now, however, this could be a short term buy opportunity. And let me kind of let me kind of spit out both sides of the story here, right? So from the bull case, right from the bull case, what we would be looking at here is, you know, second day below the 50 day moving average. However, we're sitting right at the 50 day moving average. And if we kind of go back to last month's price action in, in January or excuse me, in July, look at where we kind of came down here to this previous 20 day moving average, quickly lost it, reclaimed it, and then we put on the next leg higher. So now we're back in this same area. This is a potential buy zone here for buyers if the market is gonna rally into the back half of August. Now, if August is gonna be an extended selling month where we're gonna see more downwards pressure followed by some consolidation, and I wouldn't even doubt it if we get three, four days of distribution where we're essentially just going sideways and it, it's creating one of those trading environments where you know everything looks good long, it looks good short on an intraday smaller time frame, but it's really not doing anything. I could potentially see that happening as well. Again, what I'm looking for here, even after we came up the CPI numbers, the reaction wasn't great, right? Like, like they didn't really, the bulls didn't really show up to play ball today, right? So, you know, what I would have liked to see was to get back over 15, 3, 17 and kind of close over that area, kind of show that we've got a little glimmer of hope here that we're, we're going to reclaim this 50 day moving average and we're going to continue to go higher. In fact, we lost that area and now sitting down here, what I'm looking for tomorrow, you can see two days in a row here where we're testing this 50 EMA. If we start to give up and we start to break through 15117, that's an automatic short position, okay? There should be no hesitation below that level. The level we're gonna look to target next is gonna be here. Now I'm gonna put a price level line on here because when I'm trading intraday, I'm not really looking at the daily chart. I'm gonna be looking at either the five minute or the one hour, but this would be my max potential here, right? My measured potential is gonna be 14,862. And the reason being is the last time we tested this was going back to 626 as well as 627. 
we came back down into this area after previously kind of gapping up and putting in a new high here. We back tested, we put in a new high, we back tested, we put in a new high. And this time here, when we back tested the 20 day moving average, we never put in that new high. So you have to assume that we're going to the next demand zone lower when we fail to put in that new high and we start to breach this area that has been acting as support. So again, if we were to kind of scroll back here and see the last time that the 50 EMA was actually tested, it hasn't been okay we got pretty darn close here in april but other than that we have not even really tested the 50 ema going all the way back to the breakout in march so that's got to tell you something right essentially you know bulls have been on an absolute terror of destruction you can see just kind of looking back at the daily candles we got a lot more green than we do red you know a little bit of a pullback but a lot more green than we do red now we're starting to see a little bit more red so are we going to kind of bounce this back up into this area kind of reclaim the 10 20 day moving average and put in that new high back towards around 16,050 16,060 or are we going to confirm this this you know these uh these two channels that are kind of sitting here at the 50 EMA for me personally, I'll welcome the back test. Um, the moves to the downside are always a lot more fast, right? It's a lot more violent. Uh, you can make money very, very quickly. So again, do not be opposed to trading to the downside. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're a bear. It doesn't mean that you want to see the market go to zero. It just means that you want to put, you know, you want to put money in your pocket. You want to put food on your table. That's what we're here to do. We're here to be realists. We're here to be adults. We're here to make money in the market. So what we want to do here is if we start to get this breakdown, 15,121 short position into the 15,800s and definitely take your profits on the way down. Now, looking at a smaller time frame, like say the one hour time frame, we can kind of see here that if we start to lose these lows here, look at the lows from today, look at the lows from yesterday. I'll actually put another drawing uh, line here just due to the fact that when I'm trading tomorrow, if we break this range and we start to get in this new zone, I would be looking to play from 15,134 down into the 15,862s. I'll be looking for those moves going back down to the downside. Now, going back up to the upside, I feel like it's going to be a lot more of a choppier move. Notice how we have no lines down here on the one hour chart, no Bollinger Band, no moving averages, but we've got all of this congestion ahead. This is going to tell you, although we can plow through these levels, it's going to be choppy. It's going to come up. It's going to come back down. It's going to go sideways. It's going to go up. It's going to come back down. It's going to go up. It's going to come back down. It makes for more of a pain in the you know what when when price action is kind of trading like that. So again, for me, I'm still sitting short. I'm still short biased until the bulls prove to me they can get back over that five day moving average. Again, I don't think this is the end of the world. Again, I think that August, if we do take a little bit of a breather here for the next leg higher, I think that's great. Um, we'll have to see, you know, time will tell to see how far down that we go, you know, below that, the next kind of support that we would be looking for would be the linear regression channel at around 14700s. And then anything below that, we would be looking at 14 four hundreds. So, you know, it depends how how big of a pullback do we want to see? We just have to play these levels each and every single day, one day at a time. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not try to guess where the market's going. Let's just potentially react to the price action right let's let's let go of the fear let's let go of you know oh my god we might lose this trade or i don't know we could bounce again here's here's a scenario if you stuck around to this video here's a scenario if we do bounce if you do get these days where you get a little bit of a dead cat bounce understand this we are below supply okay so that means we're below resistance we're on daily time frame so if we're gonna go long let's think scalp so if normally we're looking to get 20, 30, 40 points off the NQ, let's try to take profits at 10, at 12, at 14, at 15, and let's just get out of it. When those short setups present themselves again, now let's try to go for 25, 30, 40 points because the moves down underneath supply are gonna be a lot more violent. Doesn't mean that we can't scalp to the long side, but we're not just gonna get in on a dead cat bounce and thinking that, hey, we're going back to all time highs. Let's just get in, get green and get the hell out, protect ourselves, use a one bar stop or trail it with the five SMA or the 10 or the 20. Use those SMAs to trail the stock, whether we're going down or we're going higher. Trail it. If you're going to play the five minute time frame, play the five minute time frame. For example, take a look at this move here. Once we lost the 20 SMA today, 
you could have trailed it with the five and as long as we don't close over the five we stay short stay short into the macro level of demand which was the 200 you can see here the first test of the 200 bounced got rejected back up at the at the 50 ema and 50 sma and then proceeded to flush through there this was your short position through the 15262 area that was your second entry on that short here's where your first entry on this potential short but again that's what i mean by trail your stop right so for example in this case this is my max pain if I'm taking this short, that's my max pain. I'm risking no more than one bar, sides appropriately. So if you're playing four, five, six mini contracts, understand that can be two, three, four thousand dollars, depending on you know how big that candle is. If that candle's 20 points, 25, 30 points, be careful, size down, play one, you know, maybe play micros, play four micros, play five micros, play 10, or you know, play six. I don't know. If you're if size down is what I'm saying. Protect yourselves. Capital preservation is always key. But that's our max pain. So we're never gonna lose more than one bar. Never. Okay, never. I don't care if the trade works or it fails. You know, if I don't care if the trade fails, we're never losing more than one bar. Just let's let's get that uh, clear. However, if we want to tighten up the stop. Trail it with the five, trail it with the 10, right? Give yourself that room, let it work. Let the move, you know, kind of open up. Let the move, you know, get its legs under it before, you know, just stopping out because, you know, every one tick higher, you know, oh, we're in drawdown. Oh, here's, we're only up one, two ticks. Like guys, we're not worried about one, two, three, even four, five ticks on the NQ. This is gonna move five, six, seven ticks in seconds, right? So let's work more in the sense of points, handles, right? Let's 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 let it digest. Let's get 15 handles. Let's get 20 handles. I think that's sufficient enough for these short-term scalpers and day traders. You know, 15, 20, 25. Leave a runner if you get 40, 50. Take it off. You know, relax. There's no reason to like try to force these trades and try to stick with the trend. Right? You can see the initial pop off the open. Yeah, we put in a nice little pop, but we failed to continue and we failed to hold the breakout spot. So once you see that we failed to hold our original breakout spot from the morning. Our momentum has shifted and the momentum is down. So we really shouldn't be looking for longs, right? We really shouldn't be looking for a bounce here or a bounce here or a bounce here or a bounce here. We shouldn't be looking for longs when the momentum is down, 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 down. You have to identify that. Identify that the moves is down. Yeah, we had a nice spike off the bell. Hopefully you guys took some profits here on the way up. Remember, three candles is what I start suggesting to take profits at or levels of supplier demand. But if you look at the entry here, boom, one, two, three, take profits. One, two, three, take profits. Every candle higher, take profits. So I'm gonna trail that stop, right? Look at if you would have trailed your stop with the five SMA, you would have got out here and that price was 15,410. Your entry was around 15,385. So you made about 20, 25 points on the move. Once it stopped below that short term power trend, you just cut the trade, make sure you don't lose at all, right? Again, same thing trail it with the five, trail it with the 10. You know, everyone's risk tolerance is different. Figure out where, what, figure out what makes you tick, right? What gets you nervous? What, what gets the blood boiling? If the blood's boiling when you're only down five or 10 points, your size too big, right? Like play one micro and get comfortable with that. And now if you're if you're if you're still feeling the anxiety when you know you're down, you know, nine handles on the NQ and you're playing one micro, then we've got a lot more to work on, right? We've got a lot more like internal stuff to work on as a trader, psychology wise as a trader. Because you know, five, 10 handles on one micro contract shouldn't really scare anyone. 30 bucks, 40 bucks. You know, that's just cost of doing business, right? Like there's a cost to do business. Like you don't win every trade. You're not gonna like be profitable all the time. You know, like there's a little bit of a cost that's involved with that. Like in order to even be on the computer screens, do we not have to pay for electricity? Do we not have to pay for internet? There's a cost to do business. So consider that a cost of doing business. Again, got a little uh, off the grid there, but I'm looking for the short setups. Again, I'm not opposed to taking the longs, but again, if we do get the longs, I'm thinking scalp, get in, get green, just get the hell out and wait for the short setup. Hope this video helps you guys. Again, join evolutiontraders.com if you guys wanna be a lifetime member. I'm doing something new where I'm gonna be doing live streaming in the pre-market as well as like the first hour, hour and a half of the market open. That's the majority when my, me and the rest of my traders are making the bulk of our money. Those live streams are gonna be on YouTube, but they're gonna be uploaded after 
I, I get done with the room. So if you wanna be there for live and in time and, and be able to screen, like uh, watch my screen share and listen to my analysis and listen to my trading, you got to become a lifetime member it is what it is i i spend a lot of time with these guys in here it would only be fair to keep it limited to those guys versus just opening it up for everyone because at the end of the day you know i'm a full-time trader i don't i don't i don't i'm not like a like i make youtube videos but i i'm not like a youtuber you know what i'm saying so it's like i'm a trader first and i'm gonna trade with my team at the end of the day my team is everything and that's what i'm looking to do i'm looking to get my team to the next level because not only when they make more money i'm gonna make more money because when they see things that i necessarily don't see in the charts you know it's going to help me profit and when i see things that they don't see in the charts it's going to help them profit so again my team is everything my team boom taking off we're not even going to mess around here so again for all of you guys that are just on youtube you guys will get the stream after we're already done with our day uh, and then you guys can kind of tune in and watch to see what, what we did and this that and the other but you know i'll be starting that up today around a little bit of a test run uh kind of getting the back end stuff set up so if you want to take advantage of that and you guys want to be in, involved in the room you know definitely uh join evolution traders become a lifetime member it's for the lifetime you guys um i really want to focus on the people who are going to be here for the long haul because for me building this trading team and this community i want to be able to trade with people for the next five ten years right next 15 years the next 20 years i don't i don't want someone who's just looking to come in here and hit one big trade and just you know go on about their way i'm looking for real deal uh real deal mccoy so with that being said i'll see all of you guys on the inside uh for the rest of you guys i'll see all of you guys on youtube uh in the next video